Hello there, my fellow desert nomads, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. Today we shall return to another minor faction of this wonderful fantasy setting, and that faction is Araby. Unfortunately, in a fashion opposite to what happened to Grand Cafe, Araby seems to be among the forgotten factions of Warhammer. And for that reason, we don't really have that many artworks about them, and barely any on today's topic, which is the armies of Araby. But we're gonna make do. I think it's also worth mentioning that out of all the nations and factions in Warhammer Fantasy, Araby might be the one that was the most blatantly ripped off of Middle Eastern folklore and nations, including Persia and Turkey. That being said, I'm your host, the Sultan GDN for today, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Sultans of Araby are very proud of their armies, and especially of their cavalry, so no expense is spared regarding their equipment and maintenance. It is popularly supposed that the horses of Araby are descended from elven mounts, brought over from the west many centuries ago. They are graceful and swift creatures which are very valued. The very best of Arabian foot soldiers are also well equipped with steel armor, keen tulwars, gleaming helmets, and fine silk clothing. These household troops, or guards, accompany the Sultan when they travel beyond the grounds of their magnificent palaces. The loyalty of these men is also famous. They are amply rewarded with riches, luxuries, and prestige as a result. The more simple foot soldiers are more plainly equipped, usually carrying iron-hafted spears and bows. As well as these regular and garrison troops, there's also irregular fighters from the desert tribes, including camel-mounted warriors from the lands of the east and the south. Regular Arabian infantry is organized into formal regiments, with a good military structure. In fact, they have so many different kinds of troops available to them that their tactics can vary from battle to battle. Great use can be made of the unarmored horsemen, who are able to skirmish against enemy formations while waiting to penetrate their lines and attack from the rear. Camels and elephants have a place as well. Elephants make excellent battering rams which can be charged against solid blocks of infantry. The Arabian infantry can also support the elephants, while dervishes rush ahead to tie up the advanced enemy units. In Araby, heavy armor is impractical given the unforgivingly hot climate. Instead, to shield themselves from the oppressive heat of the sun, they wear voluminous robes and body coverings, which also make them harder to hit. Arabian soldiers wear white or off-white clothing, with turbans often with a uniform color within a regiment. Some units may wear clothes with bright colors, over the tunics and trousers. Armor is often worn underneath the tunic, but where visible, it is steel, occasionally with bronze, copper, and gold decoration. Regimental officers or other important persons can wear black clothing, as do some of the desert tribesmen. Weapons are made of steel. Shields are usually of a solid color, sometimes with decorative tassels made out of horsehair and dyed red. Spear shafts and bows are natural wood. Banners will be any solid color and usually carry either a single device in a contrasting color or else reams of text from the great sacred books of the great Arabian sage Mullah Akladan. Merchants from Araby even introduced the scimitar to the old world. Its curved blade, single edge and lightweight lend its speed and accuracy in the hands of a skilled fighter. The severity of the scimitar's curve can vary considerably, although they are all equally effective. Just like swords, they come in one or two-handed varieties, with blades as long as three feet. It is also believed that the scimitar evolved from the kopesh, which is a Nehekaran weapon. Firearms can also be found in Araby, both handguns and the famous Jezail rifles, from which the large rifles of the Old Worlders and Skaven would develop. Among the most exotic weapons that we can find in Araby, we also have the katar, a broad-bladed dagger held by a glove to the hand. Also the Jambia, a highly ornate curved dagger, and the Tufang, a light musket used by some tribes. The wizards of Araby are a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield, 
Their control over elemental spirits allows them to unleash terror upon enemy ranks. They rule over multitudes of elemental creatures, each with unique abilities. These include jinn or genies of multiple kinds. Among their more exotic troops, we also have warriors riding flying carpets. Moving on, let's say a few words about some individual infantry units of Araby. As I did mention in the beginning, these are fairly basic, but with a Middle Eastern flavor, which makes them unique. Unfortunately, since this faction is quite possibly at the bottom of GW's priority list, we only have pictures of minis and next to no artworks on them. Many old worlders look upon Arabians with a great deal of contempt and see them as nothing more than barbarians. The nomads of the desert look upon slaves as nothing more than a commodity. Most Mameluk slaves are thus taken captive from other nomad tribes and theirs is a short and brutal existence. When it comes to battle, these are the lowest kind of troops, unmotivated, poorly equipped, albeit numerous. The regular armies of Araby are based on infantry regiments, and it is the Arabian spearmen which make up the bulk of those. These guys garrison the cities and towns and enforce law and order throughout Araby, as well as forming the standing armies of Araby. Most of these carry tall spears and shields, and fight in well-disciplined ranks. Among these, there's also distinctive regiments that traditionally fight with curved swords, or wear uniforms typical of their place of origin. As the most ordinary troops that make up the Arab armies, their equipment is quite modest compared to other warriors, like the guards of the nobility, and they are usually equipped with simple iron-tipped spears. Arabian archers are the most common missile unit in Araby, making up the bulk of their garrisons. The men of Araby place great faith in the bow, and in all the cities of the land they maintain strong regiments of Arabian archers. Although firearms are known in Araby, they are not as common or as advanced as those in the old world nowadays, and are rarely entrusted to simple troops. Thus, Arabian archers are equipped with short bows, a sword at their side, and are mostly unarmored. Sometimes these archers are mounted on Arabian war elephants to shoot down from their backs. The dervishes are maybe the most renowned and notable warriors of Araby, being considered battle-hardened fanatics who are more than willing to fight and die on the battlefield for their faith. They are famous for the fury that surrounds them in battle, and for the hatred they have towards the men of the old world, causing true terror in their hearts. They fight armed with swords, without armor, and also face their enemies mounted on steeds. Their role on the battlefield is to advance quickly and effectively contain any enemy infantry advance. They make up one of the many nomadic tribes of the Great Arabian Desert. They haunt a territory beyond the Atalan Mountains known as the Land of the Dervishes. Sometimes they are described as dark-skinned demons, and during the Crusade especially, they fought in the armies of Mehmed Bey, also known as the Butcher. The personal guards of the rulers of Araby are famous for their loyalty and their equipment, as they carry weapons of the finest quality and wear bright and colorful clothes with silk brocades. They are mostly armed with steel shields, sharp scimitars or tulwars, and gleaming helmets. Their armor tends to be light, made of steel, although they tend to be more armored than the rest of Arabian warriors. The vast majority are human of origin, but there is also no lack of gods out of other races, such as ogres, reserved only for the most wealthy and eccentric nobles. Each sultan or caliph, or minor noble or sorcerer, has their own core of guards. Although most of them are free men and women, there are some who come from a slave background and have been rewarded with freedom. Legendary bands of such warriors, drawn from the southern part of Araby, include the fearsome daughters of Tariq from the land of assassins, the royal harem guard of Lashiek, and the guard of the black scimitar. One of the most famous and sought after bodyguard units in Araby are the Janissaries. These are armed with terrible weapons and have unsurpassed resistance and training. If an Arab guard bears no weapon, it is seen as a sign of prestige and skill since it is considered a display of combat prowess to dispense even with the simplest blade. Many nobles, those with harems of their own, train their bastard sons and daughters as personal guards too. 
Some merchants also hire them during their long journeys into other lands. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the shamelessly ripped off Middle East lore for the armies of Araby and Warhammer 40k for today. Okay, I'm mostly joking, but I do think GW could have done a better job at creating a desert faction. Or at least they could have changed the names without using those outright. Yeah, sure, they use Y instead of I when writing Arabian, but then again the pronunciation is the same. Anyway, Araby does have some outlandish units like Carpet Riders and Genies, and we're gonna go over those as well next time. What are your thoughts on the armies and units of Araby? Anything you'd like to add or complete? I look forward to reading that in the comments below. If you found this at least informative, do consider leaving a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and the blessings of Sigmar be upon you.